check if using thin graphene copper heat sink is really good on new NVMe drives in the laptop. Usually, laptop manufacturers provide heat sinks for their laptops. But laptops nowadays, like mine, have two SSD slots and manufacturers do not provide heat sinks for the second slot. In this video, we will use JM.2 copper heat sink to keep my Cushion P3 Plus from overheating. It has copper sheet which is a good material for heat sink because of its 400 watt per meter Kelvin thermal conductivity. And graphene sheet on the other hand has thermal conductivity of 5000 watt per meter Kelvin. So in theory, as the copper absorbs heat from SSD, the graphene sheet will quickly absorb the heat from the copper and disperse it in the air. But it will really work on a laptop? So let's find out. Installation of the heat sink is easy as it comes with adhesive. Just make sure that all chips made contact with the heat sink to ensure that there will be heat transfer. But before we test the heat sink, please like and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos. To test the heat sink, I will compare the maximum temperature of the NVMe drive when transferring my 16GB video project and how long it takes to transfer the files. I will be using HWinfo app to monitor the temperature and the built-in stopwatch to record the time. To have a comparison, we tested the SSD before installing the heatsink. As you can see on the video, after a few seconds, the transfer speed suddenly drops. I'm not sure if the sudden drop to speed is due to the thermal throttle of the drive or that is the real speed of the SSD after using all its SLC cache. As you can see, the temperature of the SSD continuously increased while transferring files. The maximum temperature reaches 78 degrees and it takes 4 minutes and 55 seconds to transfer the 16 GB file which is very slow for a NVMe drive. Now, let's see if the performance will improve after installing the SSD heatsink. The speed still slows down after a few seconds. It, it looks like the SSD is real slow after it uses all its SLC cache. The thin graphene sheet is not effective as a heatsink since the temperature still increases even after its installation. The maximum temperature reaches 73 degrees and it takes 4 minutes and 38 seconds to transfer the 16 GB file, which is an improvement from not having a heatsink. But still, it's not good performance for an SSD. So where it can go wrong? After analyzing the graphing sheet, I have concluded two possible reasons why it did not work. First, there is no airflow inside the laptop. The heat was only transferred to the air inside the laptop and when the air inside already got hot, the heat sink could not transfer much heat anymore. Second, we do not know the thermal conductivity of the adhesive on the graphene sheet. Normal adhesive does not have high thermal conductivity, which could be the reason why the heat was not transferred quickly. To conclude this video, for an average user, a graphene sheet can improve the temperature of the SSD. But for heavy users like gaming and video editing, you may need something better to prevent the SSD from overheating. 
Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel so you will get updated when I upload my next video. I will be trying out other SSD heatsink in my next video so I hope to see you in my next video.